Can we begin? I'm wishing for you to join the table in a couple of minutes. Too late this morning. We're about 50 for sure. How many? 15. <laughs> My God, that's a lot. Hmm? Yeah, some connection, possibly. 22. I had 50, 50, 51, 53 last night. You know, I don't like the idea of waiting for people to come. I think we should just begin. Okay, well, please go ahead. Namo Vishnu Padaya Krishna Pristaya Bhutale Srimati Bhakti Vedanta Swami Niti Namane Namaste Sarasati Devi Koravani Pricharine Nirvishesha Shanyavadi Paschacha Deshatarine Vanchakaupata Rubyascha Kripa Sindhu Bhayevacha Patitanam Pavanhe Bio Vaishnavibyo Namo Namaha Jai Sri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Sri Atvaita Gadadhar Sri Vasadi Gaur Bhaktavinda Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare Hare so, we had a couple of groups still to present uh, their conclusions from the discussion yesterday. We were talking about ISKCON's success and failures in uh, the loving exchange. So, there were, we heard from a couple of groups, but there were two other groups who didn't make a presentation. So, are some of you here who were in that, those groups? You could tell us what you discussed. Talasi Pran Krishna Prabhu, 
Were you in the group? Were you in a group? You'd like to tell us what you discussed yesterday? Am I, is there no response at all, Krishna Keshava Prabhu? All right, thank you. Yeah, very interesting to hear all this. Definitely, that these things are there. Sometimes we get groupism. That oh, you're not this. You're not our god brother. You're you're initiated by somebody else, and we don't feel the same connection with them, and they become separated. And it becomes a you know, one, the, the disciples of one guru's group and they, they dominate, they have their place, they have control over certain activities in the temple that, oh, this is all done by our god brothers and god sisters, you're from another guru, you can't do it. These kind of problems do come, neophyte devotees. So we have to constantly preach against these things. The preaching is very important to try to unite everyone. That's why we give so much importance to the position of Srila Prabhupada, to unite the whole movement. And I appreciate also the point that sometimes we do tend to put all the emphasis on making devotees and don't put much care into looking after those people who are already devotees. However, I have seen in the last 10 years a lot of increase in the emphasis on devotee care. And more and more we're caring because we're finding it very, very hard to make new devotees. It be, it's not easy to recruit new devotees. It's much better if we take care of the old ones, take care of the ones we've got. And by taking care of the ones we've got, then naturally new people will come in. So the, these are important points. I appreciate you brought these things up. Thank you very much. And we have another Mataji with us. Anandini Mataji. Hi, Krishna. Krishna. Yeah. Um. Yesterday, I mean, we discussed some of. Uh, I was in group two, and now uh, the like the uh, positive ones where devotees feel encouraged, like um, when they actually go for book distribution, and uh, even when like many of them said that when they became devotees, how they were welcomed and um, you know those things, they were given prasadam and uh, sweet words, those kind of things. And the challenges uh, which were discussed, some of them were like um, um, many of the communities, uh, they 
uh, they don't have that kind of uh, um, devotee get together. Um, say for uh, instance, if somebody falls sick and is not in good financial situation or something, so that's kind of that devotee support is lacking to uh, you know give that kind of uh, support and assistance. Um, and uh, another positive point which was uh, brought in was uh, Bhakti Briksha, where there are less number of devotees, say like 10 to 15. So then the, whoever is the leader over there, he, he or she uh, is in uh, contact with the uh, other devotees who are being preached or taken care. So it's kind of a more personal and one-to-one -one relationship. Um, and another uh, challenge which was uh, uh, brought in was uh, sometimes um, we don't confide in that other devotee like that Gumbia Mahatya Tipuchi the principal uh, because sometimes we have our egos and that insecurity that uh, what if I tell this person and what if he or she goes around and tells us to tell you know to other people devotees so that kind of insecurities are there so how to uh, you know overcome them and at the same time find that kind of friendship and solace in um, the other devotees, the senior devotees, so that they can open up their minds. Um, yeah, yeah. So, and, and it was also said that some of the uh, centers like Chapati, Maya, Vrindavan, they have that kind of uh, system where they have, uh, where one can find, um, you know, equals to associate and seniors and things like that. So that kind of uh, system may not be available in all of these concentrations. Some do have and some don't. So yeah, so those were the things which were discussed. Okay. Thank you. And so yeah, uh, it, it, uh, devotee care is a question of uh, how much we can care. You know, people look uh, people look for finance financial support or financial backing, that can be challenging sometimes, you know. You know, if, if, if some people know that they, they can get money, <laughs> they can borrow money, <laughs> you, you, can attract, you can have a lot of devotees, <laughs> a lot of people coming, joining our movement. <laughs> so it have to be, there, you know, it, it, it's not such an easy thing. To be able to give out money to people to support them financially. Of course, like during this time, during the pandemic, here in Mayapur, they're doing you know they're doing nicely. There, there were a number of people working, and they didn't have jobs anymore because the people not coming to the temple. But you know, the Mayapur management arranged to give them prasadam every day. You know, they arranged free prasadam for them. So, trying to do some things, yeah, it's, 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 uh, there's always constraints what we can actually do to help, how, how far we can go to help other people. Yeah. We're really not a, a social movement, but at the same time we do have an obligation to people who have given, if they've given their life, They've come in, come to Krishna consciousness. They're working full time as devotees. Then we do have some kind of obligation to them to help them and try to keep maintain them. And generally, we do, we do do that. You know, there's a number. There's like there's one devotee here. I remember his wife had to have a big operation, and the devotees somehow they collected the funds and they got the money and they gave them so his wife could go to Calcutta. And have the operation. And so the, there is quite a bit of care going on. Mm. What, what was your point about the Gaudiya Mat? What did you say? No, I didn't mention anything about Gaudiya Mat. I thought I heard you talk about, said something about Gaudiya Mat, they do something. Mm, no, um, uh, you know, no, no, no. They just, uh, you know, they were discussing like 
Maya for Vrindavan and some other temples have, uh, communities have, have this kind of system where the support is there, but like not many of the ISKCON mm -hmm. centers or communities. Yeah, Mayapur, Vrindavan, because they're, you know, a lot of devotees are based here. But, but you go to a city, <laughs> people are a bit more, they're not so much connected with the temple, maybe far away. And yes. It's a very different situation. But being in Mayapur or Vrindavan, you know, the, these are special places. This is a where everyone's a devotee and there's small places also, much easier. And the congregation's much bigger also. You've got, you, you know, they're like world, world projects. The whole world is helping to support Mayapur and Vrindavan also. They get a lot of support from outside Vrindavan. But other cities, you know, everything is maintained by that, the people there, you know. Yeah. So, that's why they can do a bit more here in Vrind Mayapur and in Vrindavan. In yeah. Difficult situations. Okay, anyway, thank you very much for these points. Thank you. Hare Krishna. Maharaj, Hare Govinda Prabhu would like to say something. Okay. Hare Krishna Maharaj, Dandas Pranam. Hare Krishna Maharaj, Dandas Pranam. I was at uh, Mumbai. In Chopati temple, we have this uh, counselor and counselor system, mentor and mentee system. Even during our uh, satsangs also, uh, if any new devotee has uh, got something to new uh, from, uh, know from uh, either the speaker or from the counselor, we used to call them 30 minutes before the satsang starts. So any confidential matters like, suppose any clarification about the spirituality or anything about uh, ISKCON, if they wanted to know. Uh, he used to take one-to-one -one <coughs> sessions like that and uh, uh, give the proper advice. Like uh, even <coughs> Guru Maharaj, what he says, through counselor, it used to come to us and from the counselor, again, it used to go to the new devotees also. And wherever financial helps are required, like some devotee, is from very poor uh, financial background and if he wanted to visit certain holy dhams during Yatra Sandal, we used to support also by collecting some funds from our <coughs> own group and we used to help them by providing tickets and other whatever facilities are required there. We used to do that way and even felicitation for the service providers in the satsang like any suppose a garland maker or uh, some, uh, the, the, this fellow suppliers, so, uh, those who use the chais and all. It, all these people also used to be felicitated by the counselor and he used to uh, declare that this person is very much encouraged. See, in, in the market we pay money and we get things, but there is a loving exchange, right? He used to do the service for the pleasure of the devotees and the Lord. So, he, the, like, uh, n n other than normal garland, he used to bring very beautiful garlands for the deities also. This is what I experienced, Maharaj. Uh -huh. I just wanted to share it with you. All right. So, thank you. Yes, we know uh, Chapati has uh, this system of uh, mentorship and everyone has some mentor. But, but, there were some difficulties I saw in, in some other place, at least at least one place I know, they had a problem with the mentor system. That people came along and introduced the mentor system and it kind of uh, just left out the older devotees. That several older devotees were just feeling not part of the temple anymore that, you know, they were not involved in the mentor scheme and everybody else is in the mentor and it became, you know, it, it can become a little bit of a problem and some people felt left out that, you know, they didn't, you know, they were older devotees and, you know, they didn't want to, they didn't want a mentor, <laughs> you know, they're already been a devotee a long time and the thought of having a mentor didn't really appeal to them, but, you know, if, 
introducing the mentor program kind of uh, split the tempo up a bit. And so it created some problems. So it, it, it works in some places, it doesn't work in every place. That's my point. That when you have a lot of senior devotees, it, it, then it's difficult to implement. If you've done, if you've had the mentor program running from the beginning, then okay, then it's easy, you, you know, it's all right, people are used to it. But to try to introduce a mentor program in a temple where you have a lot of older devotees, it's very difficult. Thank you, Mara. Thank you very much, Paralai. Mm. Thank you for also telling us about this mentor program. It's certainly nice that new devotees have a mentor, they have somebody they can go to and inquire from. It's actually important. It, it, it is important that, because you can't expect everyone, every disciple to be able to go personally to the spiritual master or to call up the guru every time they have a question. <laughs> it would become very difficult. Hmm. Some people do it, but uh, it's not very practical. So it's certainly nice, a local temple, every temple, the, the, they have people, seen devotees who are willing to take care and to guide. It gives also older people some responsibility, taking care of the devotees. Okay, so I think we pretty much covered that fourth verse, right? If we look at the objectives here, I, I think if, if you have your book there, the objectives, I think we've covered everything. Uh, practice. I'll just read through the objectives from this fourth verse. Reflected, we reflected on our experience of applying the loving relationships, and discussed ISKCON's successes in facilitating these exchanges, practical ways of applying the loving relationships within ISKCON, full-time and congregational members. Practical ways. Yeah, we spoke about, we've been speaking how to apply it. Qualification required to utilize everyone's contribution to further Krishna consciousness movement. Yeah, we spoke about the difficulties and the, the, the serious responsibility which is there. Then the importance of all devotees of applying the Didati principle in relation to spreading, at least in, the, in relation to spending at least 50% of one's income. Yeah, we spoke about that and discussed the relevance of the verse, Nitya Siddha Krishna Prima. We also covered that, ver that verse in the beginning. All right, so after hearing about these loving exchanges, then we want to think more about how we would apply these loving exchanges. Of course, you can't just do it in a universal manner, they treat everyone the same. You know, are you going to inquire confidentially from a new bhakta? Someone's a new devotee, you know, and you've got some problem in your Krishna consciousness, maybe it's in your family life or maybe it's with your japa or something, are you going to go to an, a new devotee and ask him to guide you? And similarly, you want to give charity, are you going to give equal charity to everyone? Do you give everyone, will you give everyone the same? You give everyone maybe a hundred rupees or maybe one lakh rupees, I don't know. And you, <laughs> we definitely want to be a little discriminating about how we distribute everything when it comes to giving and when it comes to receiving also. And, and then also prasadam. We have to consider also young people cannot eat too much, old people cannot eat too little. <laughs> Prabhupada used to tell us. 
And so when we were young, we could eat so much halava and pakoras and gulab jamuns and, you know, we had huge appetites. But in the old age, you know, the body's changed, we can't do it. So there's some difference, you have, we have to just, we can't expect everyone's the same. So we're going to go on now, the next verse, verse number five, is speaking about relation, how to apply these relationships. How do you generally deal with people? We will ask, maybe we, we can ask someone, let's ask uh, maybe uh, Ananda Lila Mataji, you can tell us, how do you greet a Mataji? A new Mataji, some Mataji is coming to the temple, how are you going to receive her? Hare Krishna, welcome with folded hands and see how the gestures then when you give a like a hug or something like that. But if somebody is seeing your devotee, I mean if it's inside the temple then probably not possible. But outside maybe observe appearances and then greet them with folded hands like that. Right. It's going to vary, right? I mean you're not going to go and hug everybody. Yeah. 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 And you're not going to be falling on the ground offering obeisances everywhere also. It would be a little strange if you're in some public gathering and they see you down on the ground at somebody, you know. <laughs> so we, we do have to be a little careful about it. Let's ask some of the men, Prabhu, uh, maybe Gadarhar Prabhu, you can tell us how do you, how do you greet people? Usually I greet him with uh, yeah, some uh, uh, nice talking, introducing uh, our uh, Krishna consciousness uh, from the a little bit scientific point of view and then if he can uh, quite understand about the philosophy then we can, can uh, uh, say our Bhagavad Gita philosophy. Mm -hmm. uh, if he is an elderly person then usually we can cannot talk much about, uh, I mean, try to teaching them about the philosophy in the beginning, but uh, we try to give some uh, comfort, how we uh, uh, react, uh, uh, deal with, with them, uh, we show our uh, loving affection and also uh, gratitude to an elderly person. Mm. Okay. Would, would you shake hands with them? Especially nowadays. Nobody shaking hands now, right? With the pandemic, right? It's not encouraged. Yeah, even in the West, people are in Namaste, right? <laughs> of course, of course. When as devotees, we don't just Namaste. We are Haribo, right? Haribo. <laughs> hands up in the air and greet them joyfully. Okay. So it will be different for different people, right? If you know a bit more about them, then, you, you know, somebody is a senior devotee, you know, a very senior devotee, maybe they're like a guru or a GBC, you know, how do you greet them? Of course, if he's a, a senior devotee, like a Brahmana, Sanyas, or even GBC, First of all, uh, we have to fall down, fall down ourselves to give the dawat to, to, <coughs> to him. And especially also mention in Padishamrata, if we, uh, at that time, we may, maybe engage in some service, uh, like a deity worship or other service, then we have to stop that service for a, a temporary time, then we try to greet them. And give uh, 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 a good maybe place for a seat or a greet with the nice words greeting. Okay. 
Okay. Yeah. Do you embrace the bodies? Uh, only for the <laughs> some the body that we already is close with. Yes. That you know well. You have a relationship with, right? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Right. Okay. Thank you. Okay. So uh, let's look at Rupa Goswami's verse, text number five, and we'll just see how Rupa Goswami describes. Let me go into screen sharing here. Oh God, what's this? Your question from His Grace Chaitanya Chandra Prasad Prabhu. Hare Krishna. Maharaj, what the Gadadhatu mentioned, ki if there are some senior devotees coming, so if, um, if some devotional service like Jiti worship or something, some important seva, can we continue the services or we not stop for the time with the service and greet this, the senior devotees? What is the principle means? Senior devotees coming, should we stop our service? Generally, that's the custom, yeah. We'll make a, a minor, usually a small reception, maybe even a little kirtan to receive them. That's nice etiquette. When they're coming, you know, you, you come out and greet them just for a minute or two and, and they'll go, usually first come, they come, they want to go see the deity, go to the temple room, offer obeisances. And they may talk, not always. It depends on that, the person. You know, he may not be in the mood, he may say, well, I'm going to give class tonight, or I'm, I'll give class tomorrow morning. But they may, some, if, you know, if, there's, if, if he's inclined, he may speak, he, but it's not, compos not, not necessary. But it's nice that you come outside, you be at the door, or just outside the door, and you make a little kirtan, to welcome him into the temple and offer a flower garland if it's available, maybe a prasadam garland from the deities can be given to him, something like that. That's, that's, that's pretty standard etiquette. Do you do that? Sorry? Yeah, I think so. I think that's the usual program. Mm -hmm. oh. uh, Maharaj, you've also got hand raised from Raja Vidya Prabhu. Okay, Raja Vidya Prabhu. I I'm not able to hear. Can you hear your voice? Oh, I, okay, can you hear me? That's better. Okay. Maharaj, uh, 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 you have to have a little bit of Maharaj. Uh, so, what if we are doing the Bhutu worship? If somebody is at the altar, at the Jai, then we have to stop the Bhutu worship and come and uh, greet the senior devotee? No, that's not required. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Maharaj. No. They're worshipping the deity, they should continue the worship of the deity. I was, I remember one time Prabhupada came to the temple and the uh, devotee was on the altar offering arti and Prabhupada came in and, and Prabhupada spoke to the devotee. Prabhupada recognized the devotee. The devotee was offering arti but Prabhupada said, oh, how are you? I haven't seen you a long time. <laughs> yeah. So, but Prabhupada didn't expect that, you know, you have to stop everything and just come and... No, now when you're worshipping the deity, the devotees are the servants of the deity, not that the deity is servant, servant of the devotee. So we like to serve Krishna. That service should go on uninterrupted. Thank you, Maharaj. Can we go to Satchinanda Navishwamba Prabhu? Okay. Hare Krishna Maharaj. 
Maharaj, there is a past time of Sri Balram Ji when he went to Nemisharan and uh, he saw, uh, just forgot the name, uh, someone was giving a class and uh, Balram Ji got offended that he didn't got up or respected Balram Ji. So uh, this is a particular instance in, uh, in which uh, a senior devotee uh, or the Lordship himself was not respected while doing some service and he got, Balram Ji got offended to such an extent that he, I uh, mean, killed him for the use of his middle birth. So just uh, you know, your comment on that regarding this, you know, this context of the discussion. Oh yes, because um, yeah. Lord Balaram came to Namisharanya and uh, what's his name was giving class. <laughs> I've also... Huh? Roma Harshan Sutta, thank you, yeah. Roma Harshan Sutta's giving class and Balaram took offence. Well, Lord Balaram considers his mission that he had come to establish religiosity and to establish the religious principles. And he saw that this Roma Harshan was not actually qualified. And so he decided to remove him. And of course, it was a, su a surprise to the, the sages, but they, they understood Lord Balaram is the Supreme Personality of Godhead. And even though Lord Balaram was ready to bring him back to life, the, the sages said, no, no, you're the Supreme Lord, leave it as it is, but just make, up, make some atonement for killing him. And so Lord Balaram did that. He killed that, the, the, that demon who was giving trouble to the sages when they performed their sacrifices. And then he went on pilgrimage and continued his pilgrimage as an atonement for killing Romaharsha. So, yeah, it's a pastime. The Lord comes to remove the impious. He, he saw that Romaharshan had some pride, that he did not offer respects like the others. Everyone else stood up. There were so many others there and they all respected some of, at least if they didn't stand up, they bowed down or they gave pranams. But Romaharshan didn't do anything, didn't acknowledge Lord Balaram at all. So Lord Balaram considered that this person he considered his birth. First of all, he was not really a pure brahmana. He was mixed birth. The mother was from a higher caste and the father. Mother was from a brahmin family. Father was from Kshatriya. And so Lord Balaram decided that better to remove him. And so Lord Balaram says, Supreme Lord, we have to accept whatever he decides we should accept. Certainly, if Lord Balaram decides Romaharshan is not fit, who are we to argue? <laughs> we, have to, we, we have to be careful not to become like Romaharshan and to neglect the Supreme Lord. In the presence of the Lord, we cannot offer respects. And we see Prabhupada coming to the temple all the time, every time, even in his elderly age of poor health, he would want to bow down and give obeisances. It's so very important, very important. Nobody should think, oh, I, you know, I don't need to bow down. Oh, it's, it's very important for us to bow down before the deities, before the Lord. Is it sufficient? You agree? Yes, thank you, Maharaj. Yeah. So, Maharaj Ananta Vilas said, Prabhu would also like to say something, if that's okay. Yes. Maharaj Radhika Kishoriya, sorry Prabhu, Maharaj Radhika Kishoriya, no problem Prabhu, actually Maharaj we had a brief question.
question. Uh, when we uh, greet, when we are supposed to greet any senior Vaishnava or uh, some GDCs or some seniors, uh, and when we are in the temple room, so should we uh, greet them in front of the deities or we shouldn't? Should we do our obeisances? When you are in front of the deities? Should we pay obeisances? Yeah, to the seniors or the Vaishnavas, how do we greet them? By paying obeisances or just greeting them? Well, usually the, the etiquette is that in front of the deities we just pay obeisances to the deities. But you may, out of spontaneous love, you may pay obeisances to your spiritual master or to a very exalted Vaishnava, but it's not required if you're in front of the deities. Because in front, in front of the deities, we worship the deity. So, in Prabhu, for example, in Prabhupada's time, we did Prabhupada's Guru Puja in front of the deities. And Prabhupada allowed it, although it's not really the etiquette, but Prabhupada considered this, that the rules and regulations are not as important as a loving devotion. The, the love and devotion with which the devotees offered the puja to Prabhupada was so wonderful that Prabhupada didn't want to stop it, he wanted to continue it. And he thought just simply the rule of rule about bowing down, not bowing down before the spiritual master in front of the deity, he thought that's not very important. He wanted to encourage the devotion. So that particular time, but generally it's not required. It's not, not supposed to happen that we don't worship the, the spiritual. You know, for someone like Prabhupada we could do it, but, you know, we may not do it so much today for every spiritual teacher. That's a very nice point, Mother. Thank you for sharing. All right. Uh, now, uh, are you able to see my screen? Um, it's not shared. No? No. I'm not used to this computer. I'm just trying to get used to it here. Uh, let me see, what have I got? iPhone, iPad, Finder. I know. Would you like me to, is it the slides you're going to show, Marat? Yeah. Do you want me to share them from my end? Could you? Is, yes, I can. Is it lesson four you want to do now, isn't it? Uh, y yes, I think so. Lesson four, right. Okay, all right. I can share them from my end. Um, and then you can just tell me when to move to the next slide. Okay. That helps. Just bear with me one second. This one, yes? Yes, right. Okay, so we can go ahead. Yeah, we go, just go through the revision. We've covered that. Okay, here, three levels of Vaishnavas. We can read that. Would you like somebody to read that? Please. Yes. Can we get some, a volunteer to read this, the screen, please? Yes. Three levels of Vaishnavas. In order to intelligently apply the six-fold loving reciprocations mentioned in the previous verse, one must select proper persons with careful discrimination. Sri Rupa Goswami therefore advises that we should meet with the Vaishnavas in an appropriate way according to their particular status. In this verse, he tells us how to deal with three types of devotees. The Kanishtha Adhikari, Madhyama Adhikari, and Uttama Adhikari. Next of instruction, text file, purpose, page 48. Okay, thank you, Prabhu.
Can we read text number five? Hare Krishna. devotees who can uh, who, who we should who we will be associating with and in order to um, intelligently apply the instructions of the previous mantra of, apply, of the six loving exchanges then um, we need to understand these different types of devotees and how to deal with them so I maybe want to pick it up from there yes right we want to understand that definitely there are different devotees and we'll look at the what's the criterion for different devotees what puts up the devotees on different levels okay so uh, you read the verse Rupa Goswami is describing this verse actually talking about the Madhyama devotee meaning intermediate devotee Right? We see the three levels there. So, the Majjama devotee, how does he see people? He said, uh, he, uh, he, somebody's trying to chant the holy name, we, he will respect them in the mind. Someone else is worshipping the deity, he will offer obeisances to them. And someone else is fixed in undeviating devotional service, never criticizes anyone, then he's a very advanced devotee, he will associate with that devotee and serve him. So in this way, he sees devotees in different ways and he relates to them according to their position. All right. What, uh, Someone like to read then for us uh, this quote from the Waves of Devotion? Sure, I can read, Maharaj. Um, the impetus for Vaidhi Bhakti is scriptural injunction. Therefore, in Bhakti Rasamrita Sindhu, the depth of one's faith in and knowledge of the scriptures determines one's eligibility to advance and place him in one of three classes Candidates, waves of devotion. Right? Waves of devotion. I don't know if you're all familiar with this book, Waves of Devotion. It's a, a book written by His Holiness Danur Daraswami, and it's covering some of the details of the nectar of devotion. Helps helps us to get more understanding of the nectar of devotion. All right, so the impetus for Vaidhi Bhakti. Vaidhi Bhakti means following devotion, doing devotional service according to the rules and regulations. As they say here, the impetus for Vaidhi Bhakti is scriptural injunction. In other words, it's not spontaneous. It's, you know, you're compelled, well, I have to do this, or I have to do that. 
you're doing everything according to different rules and regulations. So it, it's uh, very beginning of devotional service. This is how we have to perform our devotional service in the beginning, initially. We have to follow the rules and regulations. We have to learn what are the rules and regulations. It's important for us in the beginning. So, Bhakti Rasamrita Sindhu, the depths of one's faith in and knowledge of the scripture determines one's eligibility to advance. So these two qualities are mentioned, one's faith and one's knowledge of the scriptures will determine whether one is Kanista, Madhyam or Uttama. Now, this is not really a measure of someone's devotion but it's a, it's a measure of their, hmm, hmm, how could we say, uh, it's a measure of their position in, a, in their performance of devotional service, but it, it doesn't recognize their internal nature, their internal characteristic. You know, someone may be very kanista, in one's faith and knowledge of scripture, but they still may be a very advanced devotee. They have great devotion in their heart. They have great love and attachment for Krishna. So we'll be talking more about that as we go on. Let's first of all understand that there are three classes of candidates for devotional service. All right, so the, we have the Kanista, and the Madhyam and the Uttama. So Kanista meaning literally the junior or the neophyte devotee. And he's described here, describes here, works with, uh, what? Little faith, is it? Well, I'm not able to read it so well. Weak with little faith, easily swayed. Oh, is easily, easily swayed, right. Weak faith, easily swayed. Right. Hmm. And work knowledge, weak knowledge, <laughs> weak knowledge cannot offer arguments to opposing op opinion. So this is a Kanista. We could say maybe he's just come to Krishna consciousness very recently. Maybe, maybe not. He may have been in Krishna consciousness. He may be in Krishna consciousness simply by, by birth, like we are seeing now in, in our Krishna consciousness movement. We get people, they're born in Krishna consciousness, maybe their mother and father are devotees, and their children are brought up in Krishna consciousness, and they never really learned the philosophy, and they have a little faith, Mm, but, you know, they're interested a lot in material life also. But somehow, that you know, they may be living here in Mayapur even, or in Vrindavan. And they're just here because their parents are here. And they're brought up and they don't have much knowledge. They don't have very strong faith in Krishna consciousness somehow. They're not really, they don't take devotional service very seriously. And so, we find people like that. So that's the Kanista level. And then the Madhyama level, someone's got strong faith and convinced. Good knowledge, but can't always convince, can't always defeat the opposing opinion. So this is the Madhyama. This is the, this is actually the, a good platform to be on. As you see, strong faith, convinced, it's not going to give up. 
He really believes in Krishna and he's, he's learning the philosophy, he's got some knowledge, good knowledge. He's just not very experienced in presenting it and in arguing with others. You know, Prabhupada would sometimes tell us, he said, you know, he said, I can speak to people, but you cannot copy me. He said, he said yeah, I can speak to them very harshly and very strongly, give very strong words to them, but you cannot speak the way I speak. Because, of course, Prabhupada was so much senior and so much, not only in age, but in the fact that he was a Vaishnava and he had so much knowledge and everything, and we were very new. So similarly, Madhyama devotees on the intermediate level, he's got good knowledge, he's just not very experienced in arguing with others. And then we come to the, the Uttama, right? Oh, Prabhu, Krishna, Krishna Keshava Prabhu, can you put in the full slide there? There's a bit missing on the Uttama, thank you, right? And so the Uttama Adhikaris describe strong faith, convinced and can convince others, strong knowledge and can defeat opposing opinion. So, on the topmost level, in terms of faith and knowledge is very strong. Strong faith. Nobody's going to shake him. He's not going to give up. He's not going to fall down. Even if everybody goes away, he would continue and he'd go on and make new devotees. And good knowledge and he can convince others. So, you know, he's a very, in a very strong position, very convinced. Now this is in terms of one's faith and knowledge. It's not an, an actual measure of their devotion. But generally, of course, we do find people with faith and knowledge, they're not going to give up Krishna consciousness very easily. If they have that faith and knowledge, even though their devotion, their actual devotion may not be very strong, may not be very mature in the heart, but because they have that strong faith and knowledge, they'll never, they'll not, they'll not, it will not be easy for them to leave Krishna consciousness. Is this clear to everyone? Yes, 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 you're all quite familiar with these three levels, Kanista, Madhyama and Uttama. Right? If we ask you, you know, what are three qualities of Uttama Adhikari, could you reply? What would, a, how would you, what would the, what's the question actually, if you look at the questions which are given there for the, Devotees, uh, give three symptoms of an Uttama Adhikari. Three symptoms of an Uttama Adhikari. Anybody like to offer? Any hands up? No hands up. <laughs> oh, hold on. Gadadhar Prabhu would like to, and we've got Jagai Nitai and Gadadhar Prabhu. Let's go to Gadadhar Prabhu first. Hare, Hare Krishna. Yes, uh, the symptom of the Uttama Dikari, first he has a strong faith and also strong knowledge. He can defeat opposing or opposing uh, opinion and also establish the uh, good conclusion in the Sastric point of view. Okay. At least two good arguments there. I don't know. I think if you say strong knowledge, then of course you good conclusion in the Shastra. It's, in, it's the same thing. Mm. And also, uh, in terms of dealing with other devotees, Marat. Yes, what's he, what's he doing in terms of dealing with other devotees? Um, I mean, not devotees, uh, all the living entities. Uh, Uttama Dikari actually it is said uh, cannot can cannot preach preach then he tried to uh, lower 
status to the Madhya Mandikari because everyone in point of Uttama Dikari, uh, everyone is the servant of Krishna. Yes, that's true. That everyone is in Uttama Dikari sees everyone serving Krishna in their different ways. And we've got um, Chaitanya Chandra Prabhu. Hare Krishna Maharaj Madhikari, he, he can uh, convince other by his, because he convinced himself, so he can convince other about the Krishna consciousness, philosophy. So? He, he see others as a part and parcel of Supreme Lord. Yeah. Mm -hmm. He is a non envious towards all. So, what? So, uh, we want to. What is it? Three characteristics. Three sim symptoms. Right? So, so the symptom of the Uttama Adhikari you're saying is? Non envious. He's not envious. Yes? He can convince others. He can convince others. So, what does he do with them? He convinces them to come become devotees? Yes, about, about the. Yes. So, he is a preacher. Sometimes right? He, You're saying he's a preacher. A preacher, he comes to. He comes down to AJ Madhya Madhikari to preach. Yes, becomes a Majjhimarikari. Prabhupada writes, Prabhupada writes there in, in, in the purport of text number five, he said, he's always thinking about how to spread Krishna consciousness and about how to give Krishna, con give the holy name to others. He's, he will be thinking about how to expand Krishna consciousness and how to introduce people to the chanting of the holy names of the Lord. So that's the mood of the Uttama Adhikari. And of course to do that, he will come down to the Madhyam platform, right? And on the Madhyam level, what, what will be the vision? What's the, character, what's the vision of the Madhyam? Madhyam, he sees it. Friends, he make no, friend, friendship with all the devotees, all the people. Lord's devotee, he see all the all our Lord's devotee, and make a friendship with them. Makes friends with the devotees. Yes. He said there are four, four characteristics of the madhyam. A poet to enthuse. Okay, let's go ahead anyway. Let's go ahead. We'll see it as we go through the slides. Can we go to the next slide, please? Krishna Keshav. All right. So we talked, we said faith is very important. You've got to have faith. So here faith is described from Chaitanya Charitamrita. Someone can read. Can we ask Yogya? Tanishta Prabhu, please to read. Yes, thank you, Prabhuji. Shabda Shabde Vishwasa Kahe Sudrada Nishchai Krishna Bhakti Kaila Sarva Param Kritahai Shraddha is confident, firm faith that by rendering transcendental loving service to Krishna, one automatically performs all subsidiary activities. Such faith is favorable to discharge of devotional service. Chaitanya Charita Amrita. Sarvam etadritam manne yannam vadasi keshava. O Krishna, I totally accept as truth all that you have told me. So faith can move mountains. Strong faith, very important. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna, Prabhu. 
Krishnamurti? Yes. Yeah. Strong faith. How can we get more faith if we have weak faith? How can we get our faith, make our faith stronger? Can we go to Somya Mataji? Your hand is up. Hare Krishna Maharaj, I actually had a doubt in uh, Uttama and Bhakti, so I just wanted to ask you. Can I go? And your voice is not very loud. Could you speak up a bit? Yeah, is it okay? Yeah? Uh, I had a doubt in Uttama Adhikari, so I just wanted to clear that Maharaj. Well, we're going to come back to it if you just hold on. Okay. We have not finished covering it up yet. You know, we're just introducing this subject. So we're talking about faith first of all. How do you get more faith? Um, Shamakunda Prabhu. To, to increase our faith, we must yeah. make association with other devotees. Yeah, you have to associate with devotees who have strong faith, right? If you associate with people who are weak in faith, then you will also be weakened by their association. But if you associate with people who have strong faith and who are very convinced, that will help you to strengthen your faith. So you have to get the right association. Okay? We'll go ahead. Let's see the next slide. I have a question here. Yes? Well, this association can be physical or it can be like uh, by lecture, body or only Bapu. It can be Vani, but Vapu is certainly better. Because the Vapu, well, Prabhupada said, the Vapu, that person, he will pull your ear. He will force you to do it. But if you're just reading, you're just hearing, we don't know. You may accept, you may not. So the physical presence is very powerful. Like if we have telephone and discussion and Zoom meeting and the virtual association, is it okay, Maharaj? It's not as good as being right beside you. <coughs> because See, telephone... Can I just add something there, Maharaj? Huh? It's just a, can I just add something? Yeah. It's just that like... Things like this kind of association that we're having now, it's necessary as a means to an end during circumstances like we're having. But in the normal course of events, we would be doing this, for example, in the classroom. Or we'd have different sets of classes like this for those people who can't physically come to the dharm. But it, there is a very important thing that when we have these classes physically, we get that physical association where we sit together, we can see each other's body language, we can experience things in the same room and there's a whole different energy that's charged in that room as there is to virtually. But it doesn't make it any less, I think, in, invalid. It just, it just, it's just a stronger form of association that we get, you know, when we're in the classroom. At least that's, that's a, um, a view that I have. And what do you think on that, Maharaj? Oh yeah, absolutely. A devotee asked Prabhupada, what is better, to sit and read the books all the time or to have the association with the devotee? And Prabhupada said, yeah, better you have the association with the devotee. And the devotee said, why? He said, because he will pull your ear. He will get you to do it. Understand? Yes, Maharaj. Thank you, Maharaj. Can we go ahead to the next slide, please? All right, three levels of Vaishnavas. Srimad Bhagavatam devotee is considered superlative and superior according to his attachment and love. Right? Now we're speaking about devotion. Chaitanya Charitamrita is describing not just simply faith and studied knowledge of the scriptures, but attachment and love. These Bhagavatam slokas describe the vision of a devotee in each classification. Go ahead. All right. Someone can read this. 11th um, canto. Raptim Prabhu, can you read this please? A Prakrita Bhakta or materialistic devotee 
does not purposefully study the Shastra and try to understand the actual standard of pure devotional service. Consequently, he does not show proper respect to advanced devotees. He may, however, follow the regulated principles, learn from his guru or from his family who worships the deity. He is to be considered on the material platform, although he's trying to advance in devotional service. Such a person is a bhakta praya or a neophyte devotee or bhakta vasa, for he is a little, little enlightened by Vaishnav philosophy. So what kind of devotee is this? Is he Kanista Majjama or Uttama? Neophyte, Kanista. Kanista, right. Yes, in terms of the language we're using, he's Kanista, right? Yeah. He, he, did, he didn't really study the scriptures, so he doesn't know what is real devotional service. But, so he follows the principles, he has a guru, maybe, and maybe his family have a deity or something. So he, he, he's not an ordinary person, he's a devotee. But he, he's still on the neophyte platform. But he can be advanced, he can, he can become advanced. Go ahead, next slide. Someone like to read? Um, Vaishnav Prabhu, can you read this, please? Vaishnav Prabhu? Okay. Um, what about Mokshada Prabhu? Moksha Mad Mokshada Madhusudana Prabhu. Yes, please. Please read. Srila Madhavacharya states that the Kanishta Adhikari has no idea that the Supreme Lord has the power of power to exist outside the temple. The being popular by uh, his own ceremonial worship. Kanishta Adhikari can't imagine that anyone is more religious than and he is not even aware that other people are more advanced. Thus, he can't understand the Madhyama or Uttama, Uttama standard of Bhakti. And sometimes, because of his, his false pride, he criticizes more advanced devotee, neglects them, or simply has no understanding of them. Thank you. So, uh, we can see. Yeah, go ahead. There's a bit more of that, right? Can you continue, Prabhu? And they exalted position as a preachers or completely self-realized souls. Another symptom of the Kanishta Adhikari is that he is infatuated by the, by the material qualifications, so-called great materialistic persons. Having a bodily concept of life himself, he is attracted by material opulence and thus minimizes Krishna's position. He sees devotional service merely as the religious aspect of life, but Things life has many enjoyable and worthwhile non-devotional aspects. So, Prabhu, I can ask. Can I ask you a question? I will ask you: What is the vision of the Kanista devotee? How does he see the Lord? Or where does he see the Lord? Moksha, that was a question for you directly. Okay, we've lost him. <laughs> um, <laughs> can we go? To, can we? Can we go to Shrimati Karuna Mataji? She's raised her hand for this. 
Hare Krishna Maharaj. And the deities, Maharaj, he sees the Lord only, in, he restricts the Lord to the deity. Thank you, Madhuji. Yes, right. So he sees the Lord only in the temple, right? In the deity. So he, he doesn't know how to deal with the devotees and he doesn't have so much friendship with devotees. So he's in that situation. Okay? So that's the Kanista, generally like that. Weak faith, uh, no, practically no knowledge, and he just sees the Lord in the deity, and he worships the deity. So that's very good that he worships a deity. So that qualifies him to get the mercy of devotees and gradually we hope he can advance and become a Majjam devotee. Okay, go ahead. So expanded vision, coming now to the second class devotee. Someone read? Read Maharaj. Please read. Should I, the, should I say the verse or just the English? Just the English, Prabhu, yeah. An intermediate second class devotee shows love for the Supreme Lord, is friendly to all devotees, and is very merciful to neophytes and ignorant people. The intermediate devotee neglects those who are envious of devotional service. All right. Shriman Bhagavatam 1246. 11246. 11th canto. Yeah. So this is important point. Majjhima devotee is recognized by these four characteristics. That he will worship the Lord. He makes friends with the devotees. He gives mercy to the innocent. And he avoids the atheist. So the Majjhima devotee, Haribo, are you there? Hare Krishna? Yes. Can you hear me? Yes, Maharaj, we can hear you. Okay. So I'm explaining Majjama devotee, he's making distinction. Who's a devotee, who's not a devotee? The Kanista, he can't make that kind of distinction. And the Uttama also, he doesn't make any distinction. But the Majjama devotee, he makes distinction. He can see the difference between one devotee one person and another. He can see who's innocent and who's a, you know, who's an atheist, who's envious. He knows who to, who to associate with and he knows who to avoid. You can see the very important position of the Madhyam devotee. And why even the Uttama devotee comes to that Madhyama devotee for preaching. Go ahead. Now this, describing the Uttama devotee, the most expansive vision. Someone read. Can we go to Sachiputra Prabhu? No? Okay, let's go to then Ananta. Oh yes, go on Sachiputra Prabhu, please go ahead. Okay, thank you, Prabhu. Yeah, so the vision of the Uttama Adhikari, seeing everything, within everything he sees Krishna. And so, he, he thinks everyone's already in Krishna consciousness in different ways, they're doing the different things. So he doesn't preach, thinks no need to preach. He'll just do his bhajan, just do his chanting. All right? We'll go ahead, yes? Qualification for seeing Krishna everywhere. Primanjana Charita Bhakti, famous quote, Prabhupada was giving the lecture, he said there's only one qualification to see Krishna, and then he quoted this verse from the Brahma Samhita. Right? The pure devotee sees Krishna in their heart, 
of hearts with the eye of devotion tinged with the salve of love. Go ahead. Okay, now we're hearing, we're going to hear about another way of classifying devotees, not in terms of faith, not in terms of love or knowledge, but this is in terms of how they chant the holy name. Right? Someone can read? Have you got someone to read? Uh, I can read again if you wish. Please, pr please Prabhu, thank you. Uh, uh, three levels of Vaishnavas. In the Chaitanya Charitamrita, Maji Lila, chapter 15 and 16, Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu in his instructions to the inhabitants of Kulina Gram indicates that the three levels of devotees are determined by how they chant the holy name. Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu then finally advised one who is chanting the Hare Krishna mantra is understood to be a Vaishnava. Therefore, you should offer all respects to him. Right. Chaitanya Charitamrita Majalila 15111. Of course, right? Lord Ch in Chaitanya Charitamrita is described, somebody's chanted the holy name one time. Should, we, should he be considered a Vaishnava? Yes. Yeah, yes. because he chanted once, right? He's chanted, so he's begun. He's begun his devotional service. So, yeah, very nice. He's a devotee. We can honor mentally, within our mind, we can offer our respects to him. And someone else is chanting the holy name regularly, constantly. He's also Vaishnava. And on the topmost platform, it's described. Oh, but let's read it. Would you like to read again, Prabhu? Jagainitai Prabhu? Yes. Um, so, three levels of Vaishnavas. A person who is always chanting the holy name of the Lord is to be considered a first class Vaishnava, and your duty is to serve his lotus feet. Purport. Srila Bhaktisiddhanta Saraswati Thakur says that any Vaishnava who is constantly chanting the holy name of the Lord should be considered to have attained the second platform of Vaishnavism. Such a devotee is superior to a neophyte Vaishnava who has just learned to chant the holy name of the Lord. A neophyte devotee simply tries to chant the holy name, whereas the advanced devotee is accustomed to chanting and takes pleasure in it. Chaitanya Charitamrita Majalila 1672. Thank you. So we see the distinction between the Kanista and the Madhyam. The Kanista is trying to chant, he's just started, just learning. But the Madhyama devotee is taking pleasure in it and he, 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 he chants constantly. Go ahead. A per This one, an, yeah. intermediate, an intermediate devotee is greatly attracted to chanting the holy name and by chanting is elevated to the platform of love. If one chants the holy name of the Lord with great attachment, he can understand his position as an eternal servant of the spiritual master. Other Vaishnavas and of, of the spiritual master, other Vaishnavas and Krishna himself. Thus intermediate Vaishnava considers himself Krishna Das, Krishna's servant. Chaitanya Charitamrita Majalila 1672 purport. Okay, so coming to the, we're st on the Madhyama level, he's taking pleasure in the chanting, he's realized himself as Krishna Das. So, very nice mode of devotional service. More about the Madhyama Adhikari, is it? Yeah. Now to the topic of second characteristics of second characteristics. The friendly attitude of the Madhyama Vaishnava adopt, adopts towards his fellow surrendered devotees of the Lord, those who are blessed by Sudha Bhakti. The Kanista Vaishnava is not on the platform of Sudha Bhakti. That is to say, he does not serve and satisfy the pure devotees. Therefore, Maitri can only be properly extended by the Majjama Adhikari to his fellow Majjama Vaishnavas, 
and the higher level Uttama Vaishnavas. This is from the Jaiva Dharma. So Maitri means, do you know the meaning? Maitri? Friendship. Friendship. Friendship, right. Yes, friendship. Friendship, because we said friendly, Vaishnava, one of the qualities of the Majjhima Adhikari, he offers worship to the Lord and he has a friendly attitude towards his fellow devotees. Makes friends with the devotees, they are also surrendered to the Lord. So definitely want to have friendship with them. But the Kanista, he can't do that. Kanista won't do that, but the Majjama will do that. Go ahead. A neophyte and an intermediate devotee should always be eager to hear the Maha Bhagavat and serve him in every respect. The neophyte and the intermediate devotees can gradually rise to the platform of Uttama Adhikari and become first class devotees. Chaitanya Charitamrita Majjhilila 1674 purport. So how does the neophyte and the intermediate devotee, how can they progress to the Uttama platform? What do they need to do? They need to hear from Mahabharata. Yeah. Yeah. Can, can we raise hands please because people start <clears throat> to each other. Yes, that's it. Karada Prabhu, go ahead. He must always hear and serve the uh, Mahabhagavat, Uttama Dikari. Yes, you should hear the Mahabhagavat devotee, yes. Anything else? And Karuna Sindhu probably would like to say something here. Karuna Sindhu? You, you're muted probably, you need to unmute. Regarding hearing, Spakti uh, Siddhanta Sarasati Thakur told Prabhupada, that I like that you like to hear. So I will give you initiation. So he liked the quality of hearing. Yes. Prabhupada would like to hear classes of, of Siddhanta. Right. So we want to advance from the Kanista to the Madhyam to the Uttama. We have to hear the Mahabhagavad devotee. And we should also serve the Mahabhagavad devotee. Serve him in every respect. Right? We say, Mahat Sevam Dwaram Mahur Vimuktes. By serving the Mahatmas, it opens the doors to liberation. So giving service, hearing is good, that's also service, but we want to also uh, give service, actual service. And we, we should inquire from the Mahabhagavat as well, right? Uh, we said uh, dadati prati guyam akyati prichati, inquiring. So we meet the great devotees, we want to inquire from them, put questions to them about Krishna consciousness to help us to advance, to get rid of any doubts we have and to strengthen our faith. So very important. Take advantage of the association of the Mahabhagavat devotees. Go ahead. All right, now we're hearing description of the Uttama. Uttama Adhikari is described. Who's going to read? Ananda, Acharya Ananda Prabhu, can you read? Yes. <laughs> Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu said, a first class Vaishnava is he whose very presence makes others chant the holy, the holy name of Krishna. Report, with great love and affection, the Mahabhagavata observes the Supreme Personality of Godhead, the devotional service and the devotee. He observes nothing beyond Krishna, Krishna consciousness and Krishna's devotees. The Mahabhagavata knows that everyone is engaged in the Lord's service in different ways. He therefore descends to the middle platform to elevate everyone to the Krishna conscious position. Chaitanya Charitamrita, Madhyalila 16.74. Thank you Prabhu. Yes. So we see the behavior of the Uttama Adhikari. And the 
he knows everyone's engaged in Krishna's service in different ways. So he comes down to the Madhyam platform in order to preach. On the topmost platform, doesn't need to preach <laughs> because his very presence makes other people chant the name of Krishna. All right, go ahead. Madhaji, you had a question about Uttamadikari? The one devotee lady wanted to know. Harsha Mataji, yes. You had a question. Or oh, Somya Mataji, sorry, one of you, yes. Somya Mataji. Yes, Maharaj. So I had a doubt that um, Uttama Adhikari can defeat opposing opinion, and at the same time, an Uttama Adhikari is not interested in blaspheming others. So will the Uttama Adhikari. Hmm, argue on the behalf of Krishna consciousness. I'm sorry, I, w I wasn't able to understand everything you said. The voice was... It's like in the beginning of the class we were discussing that Uttama Adhikari can defeat opposing opinion. Defeat opposing and opinion. And uh -huh. said Uttama Adhikari is not interested in blaspheming others. So will an Uttama Adhikari argue on the behalf of Krishna Consciousness? Will an Uttama Adhikari do what on behalf of Krishna Consciousness? Yes, Maharaj. No. <laughs> your, your question wasn't clear, Swami Mataji. Um, will an Uttama Adhikari do what? Will an Uttama Adhikari argue for Krishna or will he speak uh, favorable to Krishna, like arguing to Mayavadis or something like that. So will he speak strongly in favor of Krishna consciousness? Is that what yeah. you're asking? Yeah. Well, yes, of course he will. But we said also, if, if he's on the Uttama platform, he may not want to preach. He may decide he's not going to preach. You know, he may be like somebody like Jagannath Das Babaji. You know, he just wanted to chant the holy name. He didn't want people to disturb him. You know, he was on the topmost platform and he would just chant. And sometimes even, the, you know, they would go and sit and chant in the... In the in the toilet, away from people, he didn't want to be... One question, uh, clarification. Um, like, in the pastime of uh, Sri Rupa Goswami and Jiva Goswami, um, I think there was a person who, who said that he defeated Rupa Goswami in, 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 in some debate or something, but Rupa Goswami is not interested. And he said, uh, okay, I, I write a note saying that you're a really great scholar. And then Jiva Goswami gets really upset, and then he uh, he defeats the scholar again, and he you know he again says that Rupa Goswami is the greatest. So in this connection, I mean Rupa Goswami and Jiva Goswami both are Uttama Dikaris. Um but why why is there like a difference in uh, in you know the way they reacted to that in that particular incident? Yeah, the difference is because Jiva Goswami is a disciple of Rupa Goswami, and he didn't want the honor of his spiritual master to be uh, lost. You know, Rupa Goswami, he signed because he, he didn't want to waste his time arguing with a foolish person. But Jiva Goswami didn't want that the honor of his spiritual master should be lost, that he signed the paper for that man. So Jiva Goswami took it on himself to defeat that man. It was the, the duty of a disciple to def defend the honor of the Guru. Mm -hmm. Thank you. And um, Srimati Karuna Mataji, you have a question. Hare Krishna Maharaj. Maharaj, you told that the Uttam Adhikari, he does not preach. He does his own uh, sadhana and his own uh, everything. And uh, then how, on a superficial level, how do we differentiate between an Uttam Adhikari and a Sahajya? You have to listen how they talk, 
How do they speak? When you hear them, the Uttama Adhikari will speak, he will simply chant the holy name and he will be very humble. But the Sahaja, he will, you know, he's going to do nonsense activities. Sahajas mean they behave, they, they, they pretend to be great devotees, but at the same time they have a lot of material desires. So you have to look closely and observe. At the same time, somebody is a sahaja, they're chanting the holy name, so we can respect them in the mind. Even though they're not genuine and they may display ecstatic symptoms, we respect them in the mind because they're chanting Hare Krishna. Maharaj, one more question. We see that uh, an Uttam Adhikari, he comes to the level of Madhya Madhikari to preach. So, can we see, can a devotee be on a, a, a Kanisht or a Madhya Madhikari? Can they be, can that, there be mixture of levels or a particular devotee is only at one level? How do we understand this? Yes, a devotee can be at different levels. Somebody may be Kanishta, but they may have also Madhya qualities. Okay. Thank you. All right. And we have one more, if that's okay, um, Maharaj. We oh. have Raja Vidya Prabhu. Yes. Hare Krishna, Maharaj. So we can consider the Uttama Adhikari, they are in the, uh, they are, they are Bhajananandi, but not Goshchanandi. Right. Uh, is my understanding is right, Maharaj? Generally, that's the mood. The, the, the Bhajananandi, he, he should be on the highest platform. Right. Okay, thank you, Maharaj. Thank you. That's all about it. Just like among sannyasis, there's different levels of sannyasis. There's the Kutichak, Bahudak, Param, Param, Paribrajakacharya, and Paramahamsa. So in the Paramahamsa stage, they don't do anything. They don't travel. They just sit down in one place and they just chant. And that's the topmost level, Paramahamsa. But here we're talking about the, the Vaishnava, Uttama. So Uttama also is like that. He's just, you know, if he's, he may just sit there and do this bhajan. So his mood is not to preach. Thank you, Maharaj. Thank you for your coming. But here we're talking about love, right? The loving symptom, Mahabhagavat feels special ecstatic love upon seeing another entity, another devotee. So that we're all, this is talking about friendship. The Mahabhagavat devotee, he sees special love towards a devotee. Although Mahabhagavat sees everybody equally, but still he can meet another Vaishnava, he understands this is a person who is actually serving Krishna. So he feels so happy, so, so much pleasure to meet him. And so he can understand if other people, you know, they're materialistic, they're serving Krishna, but they're materialistic. But then somebody comes who's a Vaishnava, he will feel genuine affection and love for them. But he's still Uttama. Is it clear? Yes, thank you, Maharaj. Thank you. Yeah, it's clear. Thank you very much. All right. Can we go ahead? We can read this text. Sure. All right. Um, Mahabhagwat again being described, topmost devotee. Do you want to go on? Yeah. No, no we'll, we'll read this. We'll okay. Mahabhagavan. Okay, so would somebody like to read? I'll read it, bro. Yes, I'll read Yes. Uh, a Mahabhagavata can turn a living entity from abominable material life to the Lord's service. This is the test of a Mahabhagavata. Although preaching is not meant for Mahabhagavata, a Mahabhagavata can descend to the platform of Madhyama Bhagavata just to convert others to Vaishnavism. Actually, a Mahabhagavata is fit fit to spread Krishna consciousness, but he does not distinguish 
where Krishna consciousness should be spread from where it should not. He thinks that everyone is competent to accept Krishna consciousness if the chance is provided. Chaitanya Charita Amrita Madhya Leela 16.74. Okay. So very clear. Mahabhagwat, the Uttama Adhikari, he can come down to preach, to convert others, to give them Krishna consciousness. Go ahead. So this is important now. You want to pay attention here to these things. Rupa Goswami has written his, the guidelines on behavior in text 5 for the Madhyama Vaishnava. So text 5 is describing for the Madhyama Vaishnava. Go ahead. First of all, Madhyama should mentally honor the devotee who chants the holy name. He should offer humble obeisances to the devotee who has undergone diksha and is worshipping the deity. And he should associate with and hum faithfully serve the pure devotee who is advanced in undeviated devotional service and who will not criticize others. So this is from Rupa Goswami's text 5, the text. Go ahead. And now we're going to hear from Srimad Bhagavatam, chapter Canto 11, where the Madhyama qualities are described. Madhyama quality described, worship, he worships Krishna as the highest object of love. He makes friends with the Lord's devotees. He's merciful to the ignorant and he avoids those who are envious by nature. So that's four characteristics of the Majjama there. Go ahead. Now we're going on to text number six. This is some, we'll come back to five. There's some more points to be studied in text number five, but we're going into text number six first to look at these, this thing. And it's important, text number six. Can we read text number six? Yep, somebody like to read out text number six, Kadada Prabhu? Yes, Prabhu. Appropriate attitude toward devotees, external features. One should overlook a devotee's having a body born in the low family, a body with a bad complexion and a deformed body, or a disease or infirm body. Nectar of the instruction, text number six, page 59. No, that's not the whole text. You, you've missed something. There's, there's quite a long text. <laughs> oh, I, I, I only see this in my screen. Oh, no, we want you to read text number six from the actual um, book. Oh, yes, from the if book. you can read the whole of the verse, because it's quite an important verse. <laughs> yes. Thank you. Uh, the translations, text number six, translation. Yes. Being situated in his original Krishna consciousness position, a pure devotee does not identify with the body. Such a devotee should not be seen from the materialistic point of view. Indeed, one should overlook a devotee having a body born in a low family, a body with a bad complexion, a deformed body, or a disease or infirm body. According to the to ordinary vision, such a imperfections may seem prominent in the body of a pure devotee. But despite such a seeming defect, the body of a pure devotee cannot be polluted. It is exactly like the waters of the Ganges, which sometimes during the rainy season are full of bubbles form and mud. The Ganges water do not become polluted. Those who are advanced in the spiritual understanding will bathe in the Ganges with outstanding of condition of the water. Okay. So do you know anybody? Do you know any any people any people? You can think of any examples, people born in a low family 
bad complexion, deformed body, diseased or infirm body, who are devotees? Um, Hari Das Thakur. Why? What what happened to him? He born in a Muslim family and uh, he is uh, very elevated that he, uh, he chanted 300 uh, mantras every day. Okay. Lord Chaitanya made him the Acharya in the chanting of the holy name. But by birth he was born in a Mohammedan family. He couldn't go in the Jagannath Puri temple. Yes? Okay. Anybody else? <clears throat> Shri Rup Goswami and Shri Sanatan Goswami, they were uh, working, uh, doing job uh, in, in the, uh, as a finance minister and home minister. So they are big men. Why couldn't they become devotees? Yes. So at, at that time it was considered very abominable to work in the, in, as a uh, servant of a Mohammedan king or uh, to work with them. But like, Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu didn't consider that and uh, they were uh, uh, Rugusa, they were of the six mean disciples of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. They were initially born in a Brahmana family. Yeah, yeah, they were. But they lost their caste, right? Yes. By association with the Mohammedans. Okay. Anybody else? Um, Smriti Karuna Mataji. Maharaj, Akola Vita Shridha, he, was, uh, he belonged to a very poor family, but Mahaprabhu was really fond of him and he really blessed him. All right. Kolaveka Shridha was very poor, but he was also Brahman, right? Kolaveka Shridha Pandit is called Shridha Pandit. And Anant Vilasav Prabhu. Hare Krishna Maharaj, Tandavatana. Narad Muni in his previous life, he was a uh, uh, son of a servant maid. Well, previous life. Uh, uh, then he served the Bhakti Vedantas and then he became a pure devotee. Like, he, he came in contact with devotees. Mm, yeah, he came in contact. Yeah, he got the blessings. He was born, we don't know much about his family. He was with his mother. We don't know it. There was no father. We don't know where the father was. Okay. And Somya Mataji. Uh, one son of Anand Goswami drank some water in the well and his body was full of allergy and pus. But Chaitanya Mahaprabhu still embraced him and told him that he was his subject. Who, who did she say? Uh, when Sanatana Goswami drank some water in a well and his body was full of pus, it was full of allergy, but Chaitanya Mahaprabhu still embraced him. And accepted All right, him. yes, he had a bad complexion, diseased body. But Chaitanya Mahaprabhu accepted him. Yes. And Ananda Lila Mataji, yes. You're muted, you need to unmute. Okay. <laughs> um, I mean, the recent example we can take from Srila Prabhupada um, in India, uh, the Western bodied people were not welcome to be as a sannyasi, but. Um, I mean, Prabhupada went over all over the world and made disciples and gave them sannyas order also, and which was uh, widely accepted even in India. Okay. Yeah, Srila Prabhupada gave sannyas to Western body people, gave them, made them Brahmins and so on. So, took some time for people in India to accept. Some people, even now, they don't accept. We've got a hand up that's not been up for a while. Domia tells Surya Prabhu. Hare Krishna Maharaj, please accept my respectful obeisance. Uh, there was a pastime in uh, Kurmashikra where Mahaprabhu uh, cured 
a devotee by the name of Vasudev who had a very uh, who, who had a diseased body, the leper. Yes, very good. The leper, leper Vasudev. Right, he had a diseased body, but he was also Brahmana. Right. Of course, we have also people like Hanuman and Garuda. You know, they're not in human bodies, but they're great devotees. All right. So many examples are there. Who is a devotee? Let's go ahead. You've got four minutes left. Oh, only four minutes left. Okay. Can we just see? Okay. Is there any more questions? Um, Hareshwari Madhavi Mataji has a question, I think. Hare Krishna Maharaj. No, I was giving an example uh, of okay. Vidura. All right. He was a son of a maid servant, but uh, he was very dear to Lord Krishna. So, so dear that uh, the Lord, he didn't want to go to Duryodhana to eat all the uh, 56 bhoga items, but he went to Vidura's house and he ate a very humble offering made by Vidura. Yes, right. Very good. Yeah, Vidura, he was uh, the sudra, son of a sudra, but from the semen of Vyasa. So he was... A, okay. He was accepted as a great devotee. He was a great devotee. Of course, he was Yamaraj, come to take part in the Lord's pastimes. All right. So... We have many examples, we see many examples and certainly uh, we want to be conscious about this, not to become too much absorbed in the external features of a devotee. We want to see more the internal mode, who is a devotee, right? So we will go on and study this, uh, we will go on tomorrow to review this more. Please look we over take. text number 5 and 6. We've not completed 5 yet, but 5 and 6 are taken together. We took some parts from text number 5. We spoke about the three levels of devotees, Kanista, and Madhyama and Uttama. And we described how the Madhyama sees, uh, well, first of all, the Kanista only sees the deity in the temple. When the Madhyama sees the Lord, he makes friends with the devotees and he gives mercy to the ignorant and he avoids those who are blasphemers or atheists or who have no interest in Krishna consciousness. And an Uttama Adhikari is someone who always, he's always, he always chants the holy name and he can make others chant the holy name. He can inspire others just by his presence to chant the holy name. And he is always thinking how to expand the Krishna consciousness movement and how to give the holy name to other people. And so sometimes we think Uttama Adhikari, he must be some weird person, some strange person who's just sitting down doing nothing. But Srila Prabhupada describes Uttama Adhikari, he's always thinking about how to expand the Krishna Consciousness Movement. All right? So, any other questions today? You have one from Sachinand and Vishwambar Prabhu. Hare Krishna Maharaj. Uh, Maharaj, uh, the definition of Uttama Adhikari, as it was read by Mataji, it was written that he uh, sees everywhere the opportunity to make uh, to make a devotee. So, uh, everywhere, I mean, uh, even if one is uh, not favorable or one is favorable. So I was just wondering, is it is it not uh, the uh, correct attitude? I mean, uh, if, if we distinguish Madhya Madhikari and Uttama Madhikari, so Madhya Madhikari distinguishes the, the envious people, but Uttama Madhikari still tries to uh, preach them or still preaches them and makes makes them the level of perfect devotee, brings them to the level of perfect devotee. So, uh, how is it that one distinguish and one doesn't distinguish at all? And is also, is it like the capability of the Uttam Adhikari to do it? 
Is it capability of the Uttama Adhikari to distinguish who is qualified to receive Krishna consciousness? No, uh, I mean, I'm asking, is it uh, the capability of Uttama, Uttama Adhikari to take everyone Krishna consciousness in spite of him being this or not? But the uh, Madhya Madhikari tries to avoid the endless teaching. Is it, uh, it's like this, Uttama Adhikari is more capable, that's why he was he's able to fix the uh, first understanding, correct? Mm. <laughs> to that, Maharaj? Yes. My 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 understanding is that actually an Uttama Adhikari is at that elevated level where he sees everything, and not just a human, um, somebody in a human body, but also somebody in an animal body as having a part and parcel of Krishna within them. So he doesn't discriminate between even a Brahmana or a dog. Because he can, he can understand that Krishna is present in all of these living entities. Um, and because of that, he's able to um, then very easily, you know, distribute Krishna consciousness um, very easily across the different types of um, people at different levels. Well, of course, we see Lord Chaitanya chanting in the Jarakanda forest and the animals are also chanting with him. Yeah, that he, he could awaken Krishna consciousness in all different species of life. Some great devotees, they're able to do that. They're able to, you know, give Krishna consciousness to the animals even. But generally, the Uttama Adhikari is going to come down to the Madhyama platform for preaching. Of course, definitely he's more qualified than the Uttam, than the Madhyam. We said in the beginning when we described the qualities of the Madhyama and the Uttama, we said the Uttama can convince others. The Madhyama, he has knowledge, but still he's not yet able to convince everyone by, by his arguments. But the Uttama, he has that power. He has that because he's, he's got such strong faith and he's so well versed in the philosophy and the knowledge that when he's presenting the philosophy he can convince the other people about it. So yes, you're right that he is more qualified than the Madhya. One, one, more, one more last question if I'm allowed to ask. Uh, regarding, uh, uh, when we are discussing about the three different qualities, uh, three different devote, uh, types of devotees, it was mentioned that they may have devotion, but uh, we, uh, even the Kanishtra Dikari may have very pakka, very strong devotion for the Lord. I was just wondering how is it that he's Kanishtra and he has a strong devotion also? Maybe if you clarify that. How is it that the Kanishtra has devotion? Strong devotion, very strong devotion. It was mentioned. He may have a good devotion, good level of devotion, but he may still be on the level of Kanishta. How is it that? Well, we said Kanishta was dis defined by their knowledge and their faith. So devotion is something different from simply faith and knowledge of scriptures. Is it like they, be, they can be on the level of Kanishta and they can have good devotion also, is it? Yes. And somebody can be on the level of Uttama and he may not be very good devotee. He may not have strong devotion. But I said because, because he's Uttama, he's not going to fall down. He's not going to give up Krishna consciousness. It is like difficult to understand how one is at the level of Uttama and he is not having strong devotion. I mean, is there any example if you can... If you can uh, uh, because they, he hasn't developed that love and attachment for Krishna. It will, it will take more time, it will come gradually. But, you know, he may not... He may have studied the philosophy very nicely, you know, he's gone through it all academically and so on. He's cultivated the knowledge of the scriptures and he does have faith in the Krishna conscious process. He's dedicated, but he just doesn't have that attachment to the, to the Lord and to the service. 
He just hasn't developed that loving feeling for the Lord yet. That that comes, it's, it's very rare. You see, so he hasn't got that, that real pure loving devotion yet. Maybe, he, you see, he needs to get that. Where do you get that? The Lord doesn't give that very easily. Krishna does not easily give that kind of love and attachment to him. That is given very rarely. There is a nature of pure, of prema bhakti that is very rarely achieved. You Would need... it be true to say, Maharaj, that like, we can see a practical example of that in our, in our movement? We had Srila Prabhupada, who was very definitely at that level of pure love of Godhead. He had absolute and complete faith in, in, in Krishna completely and totally and was very, very, you know, very, very um, um, deeply devotional in his mood, in his sadhana, in everything he did, in his emotions even. He, to the point where if people fell down, he would be very happy to bring them back into the fold and forgive them by saying, you know, Krishna can judge, I cannot judge. Um, and that then, you know, underneath him, we can see people rising to different levels of devotion of the devotional platform, but then, you know, every now and then faltering um, as, as we do, because we haven't reached that level of pure devotional service like Prabhupada did. Would it be fair to say that that's quite a practical example? Yes, yes, I agree. Yeah, definitely. You, you, you know, it's, it, it's a very special quality to develop that loving affection for Krishna. It's not just by going through the motions of sadhana. It's not just by uh, our own efforts. You have to, you know, you, you have to get it. You have to get some very special blessing from Krishna or from his devotee. Krishna is very, 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 spe very selective. Who does he give it to? Very rarely he will give it. And Prabhupada explains, Krishna gave, gave it to Arjuna. He, had, he became his chariot driver and he became messenger for Maharaj Yudhisthira. So Krishna doesn't like to give himself so freely to everyone. So you can, you can come to the Uttama platform by our own efforts, by our faith and by our study of scripture. But you don't get that prema bhakti so easy to actually develop that that attachment and that love for Krishna. That requires it. That's the, the the change of heart. And this is something we're often not aware of, but it's important to know about it, you should understand that uh, one can be Uttama and at the same time he may not have pure love, real loving devotion for Krishna. There are three levels of loving Krishna. You know, we say devotional service in practice, devotional service in ecstasy, devotional service in love of God. And so we're talking about Vaidhi Bhakti devotional service according to the rules and regulations in practice. We're a long way from the topmost, from the prema bhakti, devotional service and love of God. It's way up there. Now, can there be any example of a Kanishta Adhikari having pure love of Godhead, having a very uh, uh, pure devotion? I'm not aware. I'm not aware of anyone, but theoretically it would be possible. You know, someone may never have gone through all the... Well, just like, you know, we talked about Srila Prabhupada. You know, Srila Prabhupada was born in a Vaishnava family. And so he saw his father worship the deity. And then as a child, he also did Jagannath Rathi Atra. And then he, you know, he went to college and he was married and he worked. And it was after that, then he met Bhakti Siddhanta Sarasati Prabhupada. And then 
you know, the things which he'd learned from his father, then they began to make more sense when he met Bhaktisiddhanta Sarasati. Because it was Bhaktisiddhanta Sarasati who instilled him more with the philosophy and the publishing of books and writing books. So initially Srila Prabhupada wasn't doing these kind of things. You know, he wasn't studying a lot of scriptures while he was so young. He was going to temple and he was seeing the deities, but he was not so much active in the other things. There was no book publishing or writing going on. That came later after he met his Guru Maharaj. So it's certainly thank possible. You, thank you very much. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we have to stop now. Yes, Maharaj. Thank you very much. We'll continue. Thank you very much. Thank, thank you, Maharaj. Maharaj. Thank you very much. Thank you, Maharaj. Please look over. Text number five and six. Okay, Srila Prabhupada Ki Jai. Jai. Jai.